combine a cast of vastly different warriors from different games to fight in one grand tournament to be the protector of the universe. Blade Stranger certainly isn't the first fighting game to group up a bunch of different fighters from different games, but perhaps it's the closest one to an indie character centric one. Blade Strangers is available now on Nintendo Switch, PS4, and PC for $40. The world of Blade Strangers takes place in one grand virtual world controlled by super advanced AI servers. In this world, an evil entity named Linda threatens the world by wanting to eat up all the data in existence. Only the Blade Stranger, the champion warrior, is strong enough to stop it. Only problem is that all the Blade Strangers have been defeated. This calls for the advanced servers to summon warriors from different worlds to battle it out for the title of Blade Stranger. The premise isn't that unique and in fact is a pretty traditional idea for fighting games like this. There is at least some effort put into the conversations between characters that are sure to make fans of each of the characters' series happy. Characters like Solange and Lange who both come from the Code Princess series recognize each other and don't end up becoming blank characters that forget their memories. You'll see a lot of fan service for each of the series like this throughout these conversations that are pretty fun to see. There's even a few multiple endings depending on the character you complete the story mode with, offering different perspectives and outcomes to the final battle. Ultimately, while Blade Strangers doesn't do anything revolutionary to give a reason why all these characters are meeting, Blade Strangers at least pays respectful homage to each one of their series. It's not on the same level of fighting game writing as, let's say, some Netherrealm games, but it's okay and certainly not lazy. Being a big fan of fighting games that still offer solid gameplay mechanics while being inviting to both new and veteran players of the genre, I was really happy to see Blade Strangers follow a similar design flow. Giving the controller to a friend that's never played a Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat game in their life could easily get acquainted with the combat controls in a matter of minutes. The controls follow a light and heavy punch system that replace low and high kicks with a unique and skill attack. You don't need to perform any quarter circles to activate any moves, they're incredibly newcomer friendly. Attacks primarily ask the player to press a certain combination of buttons together which can even be mapped to a single button to make the move even easier to execute. As far as complexity goes, the toughest thing the game asks you to do to perform an attack is pressing a straight direction in combination with another button. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. The cast of characters available ranges from numerous Nicholas and Studio Saisens and properties. You'll find the likes of Gunvolt from Azor Striker Gunvolt, Quote from Cape Story, and Soul Lange from Code Princess. It's certainly a group of characters I'd never think to see in a game together. Each character's moveset feels unique and caters to their own series' lore. Isaac's skill can turn him into an angel or a demon for example, while Shovel Knight can summon the Troublefish. There's plenty here to make anyone that's a fan of a specific character smile. Now during gameplay, one thing I wasn't too much of a fan of was the slower paced gameplay. Playing other easy entry fighting games like Dragon Ball Fighters and Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, I preferred their more fast paced oriented gameplay. Luckily after a few sessions in the mission mode that teaches you new combos and throws survival missions at you, I was learning new techniques to make the gameplay a bit more fun and engaging. Outside of the traditional story versus arcade and training modes, you have the online mode that's sure to be the life of this game post launch. Having played Strangers before its release made it incredibly hard to actually find someone else to play against online. I did manage to get two rounds in after coordinating a time to jump online with another reviewer friend of mine. The match was stable, but it's hard to judge how lively the online community base will be. For the time being, you can search for casual, rank, and stealth matches that hide away all the stats of the players. I was disappointed to see no dedicated friend lobby here. Right now, while the online base is pretty much empty, it's not hard for me to tell a friend, hey, jump online and we can just coordinate jumping into each other's rooms. Once it gets crowded, I can see that becoming an issue with the only gate behind your room is setting a password that you text your friend. It seems odd because you can actually organize the online leaderboard by your friends, so I'm not sure why friends wasn't an option when setting the preferences of your room. I do want to mention I am playing on the Switch version and this might be different on the PS4 and PC, and I'll leave an update on that in the comments down below. At first glance, I was taken back by Blade Stranger's visuals. I wasn't a big fan of it, it looked incredibly alias. After playing a few hours of it though, it started to grow on me a bit and I started to realize what the game was actually going for with this art direction. Although it is displayed in a 2D point of view, the character models themselves are actually 3D with this almost jaggy like outline around them to make the characters look like well drawn 2D sprites. It's sort of the same art direction that the recent Dragon Ball Fighters game took. Now while the art style did grow on me over time, there still are some characters that pull it off better than others. I tended to prefer how the filter affected more simple looking characters rather than those with more complex looking costumes. On the other hand, stages look great and in fact look better than some of the characters themselves. Some of the 3D models in the background like the chest, brick wall of the Binding of Isaac stage look so much better than some of the character models and it's because of that filter over the models. It can at times feel like there's a battle for the dominant art style. 
It's a bit less noticeable when you're playing on the go with the Switch, but if you're playing in dock mode or on a PC or a PS4, it becomes much more apparent. As far as performance goes, Blade Strangers ran completely fine outside of a few loading sections right before a match started. The stage would load and you see a slight slowdown before the characters actually come into the match. It was constant but never really affected the gameplay at all and in fact is something I've seen in a lot of fighting games lately. Jumping right into a match, I was surprised to find not that everybody was voiced, but that everybody was voiced in Japanese. To say I was flabbergasted to hear Shovel Knight speak full on Japanese in a deep, masculine voice is an understatement. Not to say that the voice acting was bad, but just unexpected. The music selection throughout the game is pretty solid too. Nothing really stood out to me as fantastic, but it wasn't bad. What I was disappointed to see was the lack of HD rumble use or any rumble use at all. Blade Strangers is a solid fighting game with an easy learning curve for newcomers to the genre that just want to jump in and play as their favorite character. With that said, the fighting combat isn't so boiled down that veteran players still can't have fun with it either. There's a nice balance between the two, although it's certainly a slower paced game than I would have liked. Presentation is certainly going to be hit or miss varying on the player. For me, it was quite odd looking at first, and though it did start to grow on me over time, I never fell in love with the look, as some aspects of the game pulled it off better than others. In the end, Blade Strangers comes off as an adequate fighting game for fans of the series being featured in this game, or just those of you looking for an easy entry fighting game to get a feel for the genre. I don't think it'll take the entire tournament circuit anytime soon, but for those looking to dip their toes into the genre, it's a good entry point. Plus, you get to see some of your favorite indie characters duke it out, even if there isn't that much of an engaging story or reason behind it. If I had to give it a score, I'd give Blade Strangers a 7.5 out of 10. That's our review of Blade Strangers for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, and PC. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more reviews just like this every single week, and you can check out my most recent videos on the left side of the screen. If you want to keep up to date with me, you can find my Discord, Twitter, and Instagram in the description as well. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.